Hey YouTube, it's Brian again coming at you today with uh, another video. I know I said in the last one that I would try to make videos uh, more regularly. Well, this is about as uh, regularly as I can get right now. It's been about two months. I did that last video in May, so uh, here we go. We'll do a fish room tour, but before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know um, in the last video, I did say that uh, you could um, tell me in the comments what type of Southern Delight fish food you might want to try and I would give away a few bottles. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give away two right now. Um, Nick Baker is the first one. He wanted some large cichlid. Nick, go ahead and comment in this video and give me your email address and I'll email you from my Aquatic Support Systems account and uh, figure out uh, how to get that shipped to you. Second person that won is Easy Waters. Uh, you wanted some small cichlid. Go ahead and comment below and uh, we'll get you set up uh, with a, uh, a bottle of that. Just uh, give me your email address in the comments and then I'll go ahead and email you and we'll figure out shipping. Um, also want to say thanks to Eddie Ortiz. He made a comment on my reef tank about um, the uh, sea kelp that ha I had growing and he suggested sea urchins and what that worked. It worked awesome. Took took several weeks but it completely cleaned all that sea lettuce off so thanks a lot Eddie on that um, I really appreciate it um, I was thinking I was gonna have to take the whole thing down and start over from scratch so um, really appreciate it anyway I'll try another giveaway um, this on this video as well um, so go ahead and in the comments below let me know which uh, flavor of Southern Delight you'd like to try which formula and um, I'll go ahead and pick a couple winners again and uh, send some out here in the near future. Um, if you're interested in trying Southern Delight or you just want to see what uh, formulas are available, go to uh, AquaticSupportSystems.com. That's where we sell it. I'm the, uh, the only bulk dealer in the country for Southern Delight and um, we also sell the smaller regular size bottles as well. So it's a great deal. It's a great fish food. I feed it to all my fish exclusively and you know uh, i've been doing it now for seven eight years and i love it so aquatic support systems.com also if you're into shrimp keeping um we sell all sorts of uh, shrimp foods shrimp products things like that as well tank uh, things are going real well with this tank um, i've added i'm not sure if i had added them um, in the last video but i've added eight large adult clown loaches there's one of them right there um, as you can see, the Oscars are all growing and their colors are looking really nice. Um, things are going really well for them. Um, the convicts are doing well. The Bichers are in there. Um, bunch of convicts. Um, I'm going to go ahead in a minute here. There's, an, there's another Bicher, one of the clown loaches. Oh, and the, the ruby red jewel cichlids, they're doing real well also. So. Let's a look at that tank. I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit here because the last video I did ended up being like a half hour long. I know some people like that. Um, it gets tricky for some other people um, to just watch that long. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, give these guys some Southern Delight power feed and you'll be able to see them go a little bonkers here. I'm trying to do this holding the camera. So one thing that a lot of people really like about Southern Delight too is that they have the shaker bottles. This really comes in handy for feeding. So once the Oscars get a little bit of uh, the scent of the food, as you know, fish do smell through water. It's not really like our smell, but at any rate, it's smell. Some of the loaches here are going to come out, I think, which is cool. So we'll move on here in the interest of trying to save some time. Um, so over here is my dual stack uh, 180 gallon tanks with the uh, 
Nendopsis hadiensis down on the bottom, and then I've got uh, Midas cichlids uh, mixed in with some silver dollars and convicts on the top. It's a good look at a pleco right here. There's the female, and then there's Cheeto over here. Cheeto's getting pretty old, but he's still doing decent. Um, you know, it is what it is. Fish get old over time. Several convicts in here that are always breeding. I do have one um, jewel cichlid in here as well. Look at that little convict in the back. Real nice coloration for a little guy or girl. Actually, it's probably a girl with that coloration. Um, but anyway, that's that tank. Not much to say about it. Now down here, the Hadiensis. I'm gonna go ahead and There's the male and one of the females. And then the other female who has wigglers, or I shouldn't say wigglers, they're free swimmers right now. Um, he just kind of takes turns breeding back and forth. Um, he'll breed over here with this gal, and then with this gal, he'll breed over in the pot. And I never pull the fry. The fry don't ever make it very long, um, but that's kind of how things go. I'm really, really digging this guy, though, the coloration on him, and he's putting on a lot of size lately. So, um, yeah, um, fun, fun fish. You can see all those. Anyway, that's that tank. We'll go over here then, and we'll look at the Umbi tank. This is another 300-gallon tank, 8 foot long. Here's the male, and then the female. She's been hiding, and um, he's been bothering her lately. He's ready to breed, I think. So she's back behind the fake plant right now. But this is Optimus, and uh, he's quite the uh, quite the guy. These are um, real Magdalena umbies from the real Magdalena River. This guy is a good 20 plus inches long, probably closer to 22 maybe, something like that. I'm not sure. But uh, doing real well. Like I say, she's been hiding a little bit lately. Um, and she's just kind of chilling back here right now. He's been bothering her, but that always happens with this pair and things will be just fine. So that's that tank. Then we've got the dual stack 210 7 foot gallon, or 210 gallon 7 foot tanks. And um, on top is a Midas pair, and on the bottom are a Red Devil pair. Red Devils, Amphilophus labiatus, Midas, Amphilophus citronellus. Let's go ahead and look at them first. So, this guy here is uh, doing real good. He's still. Vicious as ever, likes to likes to mess around and put your finger up there. He gets uh, all upset. I've got um, a few ornate and a few endolichiri bikers, bichers in there too, but they just never seem to come out. They typically hide back here in this area. And I got a bunch of small clown loaches too. You can see a couple right there. And then there's also some some uh, jewel cichlids in there. There's a few more of the loaches. Um, I'll go ahead and put a little bit of food in this tank too and see if some of the loaches and things like that come out. Let me go ahead and get this bottle of power feed over here. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. But we'll give it a shot. I just gotta remember to put the cover back on sometimes when I feed. In a video, I forget to put the cover back on, and that's never good. But, well, they're probably not going to come out right now. Um, this is in the evening. Um, things are starting to wind down, and to be honest with you, they are getting a little bit docile at this time of day. They just always are. But, and then over here, down here, we've got the uh, Amphilophus labiatus, or um, Red Devils. And they regularly are spawning now. They're in the pot, and I'm assuming they're guarding some eggs. 
but I don't know that for sure. Um, I can't see any. It's a little dark in there, but um, see if a little food might draw them out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll put in some large cichlid for this one. There's also a bunch of uh, loaches in here too, real small ones. Yeah, they're not going to come out. Sorry about that. That's just uh, real uh, non-exciting, I guess, if you will. But, you know, it is what it is. Part of it's the time of day. Part of it is I think that they've either spawned or are pretty close to spawning. So. so that's really it for the basement fish room. Although I do still have a couple of shrimp tanks. Um, I got a bunch of... Uh, um galaxy tigers in here and a bunch of blue bolts in here i should have put some food in so that they would start to come out but i'll try to remember to do that next time um, up here is a shrimp tank that i've sold all the shrimp out of and i'm just going to use this probably to pull some fry or as a hospital tank or something like that <coughs> excuse me the other triple stack tank that was over here is now gone. I sold all, all three of those shrimp tanks. So. so let's go upstairs and take a look. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the reef tanks now. We're up in the living room and this is the Red Sea 200, 260E Max or Max 260E, however you wanna say it. Uh, this tank's about five years old or so. Uh, maybe not quite that much, maybe three. Um, uh, and it's doing real well lately. Um, I always hesitate to say that because whenever I feel like things are going really good, things start to do not so good with these tanks. But at any rate, um, let's have a look here. As you can see, all the euphelia are looking plush, and these uh, trumpet corals, candy canes, whatever you want to call them, are looking good. This leather here is looking great. The... Uh, the Duncans up there are really growing and then I've gotten I've added some torches some additional ones since the last video and a couple of them namely this one and this one up here are really doing well um, and then the Zoas really have been taken off a lot lately too and I added a few additional ones I found some really good deals locally on some kind of rocks that uh, you know have uh, Zoas already on them some of them are closed right now for whatever reason Around the corner, there's a couple favias and things like that. Um, and then we've got um, a symphilia, I believe it's pronounced, that's doing really good down here. Another one next to it that's doing fairly good. And then one back here that's doing really nicely. Some green mushrooms that are doing nice. I uh, just added this plate coral this week. Um, let's see if we can get a better look at that. There we go. I'm using a different camera, can you tell? And then a baby Welso down here. Uh, the fish in this tank are still the same. I've got the big purple tang back there. A couple of clowns, I forget which type. Um, firefish, two Wheeler's Gobies. The, uh, what is it? The long-nosed hawkfish, I believe that's what it is up there. Anyway. Um, let's go over to the 125 gallon. Okay, so here's the 125 gallon reef tank. We'll take a look at this. It's been doing pretty good other than a couple of problems, which I'll show you. But we'll just start over here. Um, things are looking pretty decent. Um, I've got these two large toadstools. One's kind of a pink with pink polyps that are not really out right now. It's been doing a lot of splitting lately. The other is a kind of a pink with green polyps. You can kind of see the polyps depending on how the blue is going to look. And then um, we've also got um, some Welsos. These are my two newest over here. Uh, recently picked them up. And then um, some, uh, some more trumpet corals and or uh, candy canes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, cabbage leather, some more toadstools, some mushrooms, some acans. Hope that exposure looks okay at the white. And then kind of the uh, euphelia garden over here. You can see I lost one right in the middle there. 
And then uh, I lost this guy on top. This was a really nice hammer. What had happened was you see this small piece of uh, Monty cap there. Um, there was a huge piece in this corner. If you look back at my last video, you see it. It broke off and it landed right on it. I didn't notice for a week and it just killed it. Um, I added a few Zoas down in here. Uh, what else? Oh, um, this new mushroom, this orange one, and then these green ones are still looking good. And then here's the other Welsos. Um, the two to the left are doing really good, and then this one lately has been dying off. I did an iodine dip, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to save it, so that's unfortunate. So we'll go into the office here and look at the final tanks. Okay, this is the Red Sea 525, Reefer 525, I should say. Um, this is my SPS dominant tank, and again, Eddie Ortiz, thank you for the suggestion on the, I'm going to adjust the exposure again on this here. Um, thank you for the suggestion on the urchins. As you can see, all of that sea lettuce is gone. There we go. Looking better. Um, it's all gone. All over the entire tank. I got a bunch of urch, not a bunch, but I got like four urchins. So we'll go through this tank here. Um, got these uh, candy canes. Nice big area. Um, nice big colony looking nice. Um, a few scallies down here. This is kind of a, I guess you call it a war paint. I'm not sure about these ones. They're doing decent, not as good as I had hoped, but, and then this one here, this one got really damaged, but it's bouncing back, um, so that's good. And then this is, I don't even know what it's called, but this is kind of my favorite coral in this tank. It looks really sweet. Um, and then just some various SPSs, some Montes, and some... Just some various SPSs and some Montes, as well as Acros. Um, some of them doing better than others, um, but uh, you know, overall things are things are going real well in this tank now. All of a sudden, unfortunately, I did lose my gem tank. I don't know what he died from, but he started looking really ill, and within two days was gone. But I've got a blue hippo in here, the yellow tang. Um, I added this. Uh, what is it? A uh, Blackface Pyramid Butterfly, I think, is this one. This yellow and white with a black face. Um, really enjoying that fish. And then, um, yeah, it's just it's going decent. I'm just being patient now and hoping that a lot of these uh, acros start to grow and stuff for me. And then the final tank is the anem anemone tank, and it's still doing real decent. Um, one thing I did is changed it up as far as uh, the rock structure goes. I was in there monkeying around with this uh, um, Red Sea power head back there, um, uh, gyre, and I accidentally knocked some rocks over and then one thing led to another and I was basically trying to rescape this thing while getting stung by NEMS. But uh, the bottom line is um, I took a few pieces out so that the rock structure wasn't as tall and it just made it look better because all the NEMS were climbing to the top um, and it was more empty towards the bottom. It has At one point for the last several weeks actually you couldn't hardly see any rock here. Now a couple of them have climbed up and they're actually on the back wall. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, the idea is just to have a big anemone ball and not really see any rock. Um, you can see the rock flower anemones are doing nice. Adjust this here a little bit. I'm sure hoping this video comes out good. I'm doing something different camera wise here like I said but you can see the rock flowers doing nice. I got a bunch of sexy shrimp in here now and then I still have the seven original clowns and uh, everything's looking real good there so anyway that's about all I got for you guys right now um, I appreciate you following along and uh, you know share this video um, if you're new to this channel uh, please subscribe hit that like button leave a comment again leave a comment on which uh, 
which uh, formula of Southern Delight you would like, and I'll pick a few uh, winners on the next video, and uh, we'll get you some of that sent out as well. And then in the meantime, if you're looking to buy Southern Delight fish food or shrimp food, I sell Shrimp King, Glass Garden brand, Salty Shrimp, go to AquaticSupportSystems.com. Um, even if you're not looking to buy, go to the website. The more hits we get, the better, as always, with any website. So until next time, thanks, you guys, for watching, and uh, hope to do another video real soon.